All right, so on to the Democratic side. If you want to know how the caucuses here on Saturday night affected the Democratic race, you can look at the candidate's schedules. If Bernie Sanders had done better here rather than losing by about five points, he'd be breaking his back to rush to South Carolina and dig in there to try to win the primary on Saturday night. Instead, Sanders and his team are now downplaying his chances at Palmetto State. He spent about 36 hours there after flying here from, Las from, this, um, to South from here to South Carolina, but now he's headed off to New England to lay some super groundwork for Super Tuesday when a couple of New England states vote on March 1st. Clinton, on the other hand, rather than rushing to South Carolina to campaign, felt confident enough to head to Southern California to spend some time with rich people there to raise money for her campaign. She will go back on the trail tomorrow. John, the same question about Clinton that we asked about Trump. Why did one caucus victory here on Saturday night so change dramatically the perception that Clinton is now, if not inevitable, in a commanding position? Well, a point that you've made and that I've made over the past few days, Mark, of course, is that one poll, that CNN poll that showed Nevada a toss-up, and the fact that the Sanders campaign, as far back as New Hampshire, said that they could win Nevada. So they raised expectations rather than lowering them. And then Hillary Clinton came in and not only won the popular vote by basically the same margin she did in 2008 against Obama, she also won the delegate count. She showed that she is her, her strengths with African-American voters and Hispanic voters are formidable, and that Sanders, although he made a slight dent on the Hispanic side, we think he didn't do enough to make anybody think that he can rob her of the electoral coalition that will carry her not just through South Carolina, but to big delegate leads in some really important states on March 1st. And the way the democratic process works, once she pulls ahead with this proportional representation, very, very hard for Sanders to catch up. The other piece on the superdelegate side, again, is her win here reinforced her, the, the connection she has to her superdelegates. They now believe in her. They now believe that she'll be the nominee and that she should be. And so if she has her, if she has those superdelegates, if she wins most of the states in the first couple weeks of March, just under the way the delegate math works, Bernie Sanders can never catch up unless he starts winning primaries and caucuses with well over 50 percent of the vote. And that's just extremely unlikely, given uh, the fact that she still has a stronghold on a lot of the elements of the Democratic Party. All right, absolutely. All right. All right. So we know now, as we've just discussed, why Clinton seems at least so formidable. But there is the possibility that Bernie Sanders, with all his fundraising strength, with the fact that he does have a hold on part of the party as well, could come back. So, John, what are the scenarios under which Bernie Sanders can stage his own comeback and stop her from getting the nomination? I got to say, Mark, the, the only scenario that I see, and it's, and it's not a totally impossible scenario, but Sanders got to come in. Uh, it's unlikely he's going to win South Carolina, but he's got to win a state that no one expects him to win. And it's got to be an important state. If Bernie Sanders somehow were to win in Texas, if Bernie Sanders were somehow to win in Georgia, and these are not, these are not highly plausible, or highly probable outcomes, but if he only wins the states that he's currently targeting, if he wins Colorado, if he wins um, maybe in Michigan, if he wins obviously Massachusetts and Vermont, that's not going to be enough. He's got to win some state that she's expected to win. Yep, and I think, look, the Clinton campaign is not just conceding those states to her. They're going to try to break his back by winning some states he's expected to do well. And, for instance, Massachusetts, the vaunted political consulting firm Dewey Square Group is based there. They're going to work very hard to try to keep Bernie Sanders from winning that state, and I think others, not necessarily shut him out, but shut him down. And I believe the only other thing that he's got going for him potentially is a big Clinton scandal or controversy. Perhaps if she's called in by the Justice Department for an interview related to her emails, that could spook voters and some elites. But it is going to be very difficult for him without a surprisingly strong showing, without any momentum right now, and I don't think he'll get any momentum out of South Carolina, to go into March and start winning unexpected places. Yeah, look, I mean, if he were to win, the other way to do it, of course, is to win a few of these big states that are general election battleground states, right? I mean, if Bernie Sanders could show strength with Democrats in Ohio, uh, down the road in Michigan, in Virginia, in Florida, maybe, maybe uh, you could start to make the claim. But boy, it's a really tough.